My name is Carrie Portel. Uh, my husband and I have four children, and right now we are at around 140 uh, cow-calf operation. Just like any other day, I was coming home and um, leaving again very quickly to go teach an exercise class, and two of my daughters came with me, and very quickly after we left our home, uh, we were hit by a drunk driver. And Initially, I just uh, thought it was him and I for a long time, and then, you know, my family said, you know, no, there were four other vehicle, vehicles involved. Uh, that was pretty astonishing. My recovery was four years long. It was a terribly, terribly long recovery. Um, I just, I felt like I was in limbo forever, and at the end of that fourth year, it became apparent of, you know, what I was supposed to be doing. And uh, I finally said, okay, I'm like, if this is what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to have to do a lot of self growth and deep breathing to get through this. Cause uh, it's definitely not been easy. One choice is what put this action uh, into a snowball effect. It's what caused the crash. And that one choice to not drink and drive that night none of this would have ever happened, but it did. So I remember laying in the hospital bed and it's, it's very vague, everything's really foggy since I was under so much medication that laying there, I remember telling myself, I'm like, well, you got a choice to make. So what are you gonna do now? How are you gonna handle this? And everybody who is in this room with you is going to handle it the way that you do. So if I came out of it very angry, and wanting to throw blame and just be a bitter person, I know that that's how my family was going to react. And it was eating me and you know up and up inside that I was like, there's no way I can make them feel what I'm feeling on the inside. So it really wasn't an option for me. I just woke up and I was like, well, this really bites. <laughs> so yeah. let's figure this out and see what the physician, the surgeon says, you know, where I'm going to be. And, you know, it was a pretty dismal prognosis. And I, you know, I remember I accepted that and I said, okay, but will you let me try? And fortunately I've had two surgeons, um, a trauma surgeon and then a specialized ankle surgeon that both said, you go for it. You do whatever you can. Just please don't re-injure yourself. Um, we walked a really tight line with those. There's a lot up here in your mind that you have to work through. And it took it took a long time because it's kind of funny, like eight months would go by and people are expecting you to be so much better because I mean, it's been eight months. And then when you come out and you're still in a wheelchair and you've got cast on, they're like, oh, oh my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm still here. <laughs> my top health challenge is... Uh, I guess keeping healthy enough to be able to walk for as long as possible. So I'm coming up on eight years uh, since the crash and they told me, you know, if I was going to be able to walk, I would probably only have eight to 10 years to do that. And so, you know, I accept that, but at the same time, I'm like, well, and you know, I'm going to just try to do everything that I possibly can to prolong that because I have this weird thing that I'm like, I'm not paralyzed. It's not like my legs won't work. It's just that it's too painful to walk. So I struggle with that a lot. And um, I do a lot of things like I, I definitely try to stay in shape as much as possible. It's very difficult uh, to keep muscle tone because I can only take 3000 steps a day. So I can't even get like the normal walking that, that a normal person would do on a daily basis to, to keep those muscles tone. And it seems like whenever I do exercise, everything has to be on the floor. I can't do any exercises standing up. So, cause there's just too much gravity, too much weight on those joints. And like, I'll do great, do great, do great. And then like, we had 95% humidity this week. I'm like, boy, my joints feel that. And I just, I couldn't work out quite as hard. And there was one day I was like, I just, there's no way I can't do it at all. I would, you know, try to still do some stretching and stuff, but trying to keep physically in shape uh, to keep walking is one of my big things. But um, like I have completely changed like diet 
Um, I try to eat a arthritis diet, which is keeping very um, low acidic foods because all that acid irritates uh, arthritis and the joints, yeah, which is very hard whenever you have homegrown tomatoes. Oh, so hard <laughs> to not eat them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, any kind, like anything like that, I take um, I take a lot of supplements that have kept me off of uh, the prescription medications, which I could definitely tell that has helped as well, because as much as the prescription medications help, they also kind of like you feel bogged down as well. Um, you can just feel that in your system. So I, I mean, I've, I've hated narcotics. I know that I needed them in the beginning, but when I finally was able to get rid of those, like, it's almost like my body felt lighter because I just didn't have that nasty stuff hanging around in my body. What are those steps that you take to get yourself out of going, sinking low into a depression type state? Um, well, one thing for me, like I always need sunlight. So I always try to put myself in a, in a physically lighter place uh, because I feel like that just makes you feel better on the inside anyway. Don't stop believing in yourself because I think with women, that's probably the thing that makes us stop in our tracks. Um, even if we see that passion, we know that's what we're, we're meant to do. We just don't believe enough in ourselves that we can do it. Because farming is traditionally a man's world, and we may have to do things differently. We may not get it done in the same time frame um, as a man, and and that's okay. But just just don't stop believing that you can do it. You can find ways, and it may take longer. You may have to dig deeper and research more, but it can be done. Every day that you wake up, you have a choice to make about what kind of day it's going to be, what you're going to do, how you're going to handle whatever situation is thrown at you. And in farming, I mean, it can go from one extreme to the next. 